I'll start with numbers, the IMF always does. And you'll have to guess what it is before the end of this sequence. Four to three. And this is not about football. Try to guess. Robin, I have the privilege to ask the first question. Margaret was just saying that everything will be digitalized. Mm -hmm. You are the champion of search engines, have been for 18 years, leading Baidu as a co-founder. Mm -hmm. And you've invested massively in artificial intelligence. Yeah. You have more than uh, 40,000 employees around the world in various places, of which 15,000 computer scientists. Right. Can you describe for us what the world will be with artificial intelligence playing a key role? Yeah, it's going to be huge, the, the impact of artificial intelligence on the society. Uh, I think uh, we are lucky when, when Baidu started about 18 years ago, uh, we just entered, the, the, the world just entered the age of the internet. Uh, so at that time, China had less than 10 million internet users. Today, How many? 10, 10 million. million. Yeah, that's the beginning of 2000. And today we have more than 800 million. So we enjoyed a tremendous ride uh, of the internet age. Uh, but I would say if the internet is the appetizer, then AI is the main course. The impact of AI will be much larger than the internet. So over the past couple of decades, every one of us experienced the, the change of the society because of the internet, but we will experience much larger change over the next few decades because of AI. Uh, especially as the technology advances, so computers can now understand humans better uh, from voice recognition, from computer vision, from natural language understanding, and from a lot of data generated by, uh, by the, the users and the internet companies. So we will see a lot of changes. The internet changed, changed a lot of our daily life, but did not have much impact on, uh, on the, the to-be industries, so to speak. And I think AI will change that too. AI will change both the, the to-see businesses, like our everyday life, but it will also change manufacturing, energy, uh, education, healthcare, lots of things uh, from industry to industry. There are lots of things we, we probably cannot imagine today that will be changed by AI. When you talk to your 15,000 scientists at the moment, in which area do you ask them to focus? Uh, it's pretty much all AI, but AI is a huge uh, area, right? I mentioned the speech recognition, computer vision, natural language understanding. Uh, these are the fundamental technologies of AI, and you have all kinds of uh, applications in areas like uh, uh, autonomous driving, uh, smart speakers at home. Uh, even search itself, I think, is an AI problem. If you think about it, you, you type in a query in human language, and the computers try to guess what you mean and then come up with results. So it's fundamentally using computer to understand human. So it's, a, it's an AI problem. Uh, so, there's, I don't know if you've read that book, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century by Yuval Noah Hariri. Yeah, I, I heard about it. He yeah. says that artificial intelligence is one thing, but it's not enough. It has to be coupled with biotech innovations. Do you agree with that? Uh, well, in the future, maybe, but over the past, it was not the case. A lot of people trying to figure out how the human brain works and try to mimic that using computers. Uh, that's not how AI works today. AI basically is still using the strengths of computers to try to mimic human, not using the, the, the uh, biological structure <laughs> to understand human. Yeah. But so uh, I would like to ask you uh, on the impact of technology. Uh, we all know that technology has a lot of impact on society, on the markets. But how about the financial system? Since you took office seven years ago, about seven years ago, uh, has the world's financial system changed due to technology? And is there any impact to you and to IMF? Well, I'll give you a very, very basic example at the International Monetary Fund, yeah. uh, seven years ago when I started as managing director, there was the word fintech was not in current use in the institution. Now, 
we have a lot of economists and financial experts actually working on fintech and trying to identify what are the benefits and uh, the, the threats as a result of fintech. You know, you can think of uh, the use of um, so just mobile... So threats, not opportunities? Well, it's both. No, no, it yeah. has... It, it, let me say a word about opportunities. Uh, when you talk about mobile banking, uh, you look at countries like, like Peru, like Kenya, uh, like the Zambia, like many other sub-Saharan African countries where people, and women in particular, did not have access to financing, did not have, did not have the ability to transact and were at threat of being robbed, of being uh, abused. And mobile banking, coupled with other uh, financial technology innovations, uh, helped them, gave up uh, the, the ability to be empowered, to be economic players. That's just one aspect in developing uh, societies of, of fintech. On the other hand, uh, you, know, you have the development of some interesting cryptocurrencies at the margin of the financial system, where clearly supervision regulations have to play a role in order to maintain stability and to keep at bay uh, the, uh, you know, the dark transactions that happen and that are transacted uh, using some of those cryptocurrencies. So it's, it, it has huge benefits, but it has its risks as well. So technologies generally outside the financial sectors are expected to improve productivity, which is something that you know, all um, society's policymakers are in search of in order to improve the uh, living standards and the income of people. But it, it's associated with threats. And I was going to ask you that, actually. Yeah. Uh, there are lots of numbers floating around. You know, how many um, millions of jobs will be under threats, will be uh, disappearing as a result of artificial intelligence. There are other numbers which are saying, no, 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 it's actually a net plus. Yeah. And there will be many more jobs created than jobs destroyed as a result. Yeah. I'll tell you about finding from the IMF once you've addressed that question. So, All right. over yeah. to you. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm always um, optimistic. But when I uh, look at uh, the, the changes, I always think, uh, about how can we make things better because of this, uh, this change. And uh, I agree with you that uh, a lot of jobs could be replaced by machine uh, uh, in the future, but uh, a lot more jobs will be created by uh, technology advancement, especially So you think it's AI. a net positive? Uh, I think so, although uh, at this time, it's hard for me or for anyone to imagine what uh, exact opportunities, new uh, you know, job opportunities will be created. But uh, I can give you a few examples that I can think of. Uh, first is the so-called labeling problem. Uh, in AI, when we try to train the computers to learn, to, uh, to behave like a human, uh, computers need a lot of data, a lot of the so-called labeled data, meaning that you need to have the, the, the question and answer pairs, and uh, it's usually done by human. It's the tagging of data that we sometimes struggle yeah, with. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You need okay. a lot of that data in order for the, the computers to, to learn. That will create a lot of jobs for people <coughs> who are in the labeling industry. And uh, as <coughs> the computer gets smarter and smarter, we, we will probably need a lot more labeling. This is not like a replacing human uh, jobs, but uh, enhancing humans' capabilities. Um, in healthcare, uh, uh, there's a term called CDSS. I think it's a clinical decision support system. It's not trying to replace doctors. It's trying to help the doctors to make better decisions. Right? Th these are the, the examples that AI is helping uh, the mankind, but not replacing uh, human labors. And you all uh, ask that the uh, efficiency or productivity uh, continue to improve. I think uh, people don't need to work long hours like we are today. Then they have more time to, to enjoy, uh, to, uh, to uh, consume more content. And content... That's assuming they have an income. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. they, they will make more <laughs> with, with less working hours, but uh, content are generally created by human. They are very, uh, it requires a lot of creativity, and computers not, are not good at that yet.
yet. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. Let me tell you about the study that we, we are just about to release, actually, which um, deals with the impact of those new technologies. And we don't distinguish between AI versus biotech versus robotization. Right. But essentially, the finding is that, and we extrapolated from 30 OECD countries to the rest of the world. Right. And the conclusion was that quite a lot of jobs will be significantly, materially affected. Yeah. Uh, when we look at those uh, 30 countries, it will be uh, about 26 million jobs that will actually probably disappear. Mm -hmm. The second findings, which I, I thought was interesting, is that because it applies essentially to those tasks that are repetitive, mm -hmm. and because there are w more women doing yeah. those jobs, right, right. women are likely to be more affected than men by the impact of artificial intelligence on the labor market. Do you think that's true? Uh, it, it could be true, but uh, like I said, uh, that's just you know, one side of the, the coin. There's another side that, you know, labeling is, you can also say it's kind of repetitive. You, you, you need Yeah, but you need to, to apply labor. judgment. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's no? relatively simple judgment. It, it's not that hard. For example, if you try to teach uh, the, the computer to drive, um, it's not that hard. You know, most people, when, when they grow up, they can learn how to drive. But it's actually very, very hard for computers to learn how to drive. Although you know, companies like Baidu and, and uh, quite a few other companies and, and Ford, uh, too, are working on autonomous driving. And we are quite a few years away from truly you know, self-driving. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's still, uh, I would say, uh, highly autonomous. Uh, vehicles, not really completely uh, you know, uh, free from drivers. So uh, we will use computer to enhance uh, the, the human activities. You don't want to replace us. Right. No, no. Uh, there's, uh, okay. Do yeah, I, am I allowed uh, one more question? I'm, yeah, I'm expected yeah. to, to, to really speed. I want to ask you one. Uh -huh. Because you have 40,000 employees around the world, many of whom are in China. Mm -hmm. Are you enjoying a regime, an environment, a framework that enables you to uh, research, develop um, anything you want? Uh, pretty much, yes. I, I, I think... Uh, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. We have lots of engineers and... Uh, it, China is a big market. There are lots of people, and uh, we, we have like hundreds of millions of users use our services every day, and a lot of data is generated. Uh, we can use uh, data to, to, to learn how to improve our services. So uh, we, we do have a lot of opportunities to innovate. But that being said, there are constraints like, uh, you know, how do you provide, uh, protect privacy, and how do you make sure that it that the technology does not go out of control, that that's do bad things to, to the mankind. There, there are things that we need to worry about, but I do see more opportunities than, than threats.